Welcome to the course Introduction to Urban Planning. In this session today, we are going to contextualize our cities. We are going to review their employment. We shall see how did we reach here where we see such giant cities. We will walk through the narratives of evolution from the perspective of urban planning. We shall explore when did all these urban cities came into picture and where did they start to exist. How did we progress and how did we reach here where we say that our future is in cities. In the current cities and settlements, we see that how our life choices are guided by innovation with regards to tools and technology, discoveries, perspectives we develop about society, environment and progress we make. Invention, discoveries, perspective and progress guides how we choose to live, where we choose to live, what we choose to do, how we choose to interact with each other, where we choose to travel, how frequently we choose to travel, how we decide to organize ourselves and so on. It was same since the beginning. Some cities failed, some succeeded. There were innovations which we still continue to adopt in our cities. There are so many aspects we can learn from reviewing the employment of our cities. At this juncture, when it is estimated by the world population study that by 2050, the world will be more than two-thirds urban, that is nearly 68 percent, roughly the reverse of the global rural urban population distribution of the mid 20th century. Therefore, it is important for us to learn from our journey, to plan for our future our people and our environment. For that reason, we study the employment of the cities, try to contextualize the current cities we see today and set a base for present and future interventions. Accordingly, the learning outcomes which are expected would be that after completion of this session, you should be able to identify these phases, you should be able to uh, label all these specific elements uh, of the urban planning in these settlements, you should be able to distinct them and identify their unique uh, characteristics and how do they really guide and what do we really learn and adopt from these settlements which we study. Like we see today in the beginning we evolved as hunting gatherer band in about 2 million BC with the invention of tools, mastery over the fire, with the development of language and the creation of art. As we can see in the left hand side of the illustration by Duncan, we led a nomadic life and moved from place to place for hunting and gathering. We started living a settled life around 8000 BC with the breakthrough in farming technology. We learned how to grow our food rather than gathering it. We learned how to domesticate animals. We experienced food surplus because of which we needed to store, protect, exchange, have a system in place to manage all these things. These led us to settle in one place then being on a regular move and also choose to be close to the water and add elements like store, defense and marketplace to our settlements. In this period around 7500 BC as given by Professor Jason Luger, we think the development of first form of city Katal Hayuk now in Turkey happened. In the rendered image, you can see proximity to water which also acted as defense. You may be able to reflect to current city planning elements which you can see in, in here. Likewise, we see that as we attained understanding on specialized workmanship and organized ourselves as specialized workers, we learned to keep records, 
learn to document, we learn to organize ourselves through complex system of institutions and we use advanced technology including technology in construction. This led to rise of cities in 300 BC. This led to rise of cities in 3000 BC. And mostly in this period, we see the record of many civilizations, including Mesopotamia, Egyptian civilization, Indus Valley civilization, Vedic period, Chinese uh, civilization we see, Israel, Greek and Roman civilization, Japan, Mayan and medieval Europe. These civilization had huge influence on cities of today. Many innovations of that time we can see even today in our cities. Looking at the early or ancient documented civilizations such as Mesopotamian civilization, Egyptian civilization, Indus Valley civilization, all of them developed along the river. Mesopotamian civilization developed along the Tigris river, Egyptian civilization developed along Niles river, Indus Valley civilization developed along Indus Sindhu river. We can call them as river valley civilization. All the river valley civilizations survival, growth and success of economy relied on agriculture. Majority of population were farmers. Unlike today, where non-agriculture based economy is one of the prime indicator of urban in many of the countries. We further see interactive trade were observed in Indus and Mesopotamian civilization. Most river valley civilization declined around 1200 BCE. Now looking at the Mesopotamian civilization which as per documentation shows spread from 3500 to 550 BC. Mesopotamia is a Greek word that means the land between two rivers. Mesopotamia does not refer to any particular civilization. Over the course of several millennia, many civilization developed, collapsed and were replaced in this region including Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians and Assyrians. Initial settlements on the northern plains with movement out to the southern and west from 6000 BC. Most of this development took specially between two rivers the Tigris and the Euphrates. Around 3500 BC, small agriculture, pottery making and cloth weaving in villages were transmitted through societies of cities. Initial settlement on northern plain with the movement out to the southern and the western from 6000 BC. Cities were located on the river banks and surrounded by their landscape with circles of irrigated agricultural land. The area supported per individual was estimated between 0.9 to 1.5 hectare per person. The daily travel distance from city to countryside did not exceed 3 to 4 kilometers for maximum agriculture productivity. You may reflect upon the current density which we use to define urban today in our countries and the distance we travel to our workplace in current times. It is said that Mesopotamian cities were some of the first examples of urban planning though the discipline was visualized very late in timeline. The Sumerians were the first society to construct the city itself as a built form. The city was partly planned and part of its growth was organic. We can see the elements of flexibility. Planning is evident in the walls, high temple district, main canal with harbor and main street. You may see that the elements of planning such as division of spaces such as residential, mixed use, commercial and civic spaces were witnessed in these cities. As we see that in this period record keeping was also started. We see evidences of Sumerians record of real estate transactions, record of property value and measurements. Because of these records, 
the historians have been able to reconstruct much of the urban growth pattern, density, property value and other metrics from cuneiform text sources. They were proud of this achievement as is attested in the epics of Gilgamesh. As per the literature, at the end of the fourth millennium, Rook was said to be the largest city in the world estimated by some scholars at 400 hectares, the size of Rome in the first century of our common era. In the image, you can see the size of circles covering the area. Rook was centered around the important temple Zegurat of Inanna, the great goddess of love and war. As you can see in the image at the center, the city produced beautiful stone sculptures depicting the temple flocks of sheep and goats. The city is believed to have been surrounded by moats. So we see that how the religion, development in creative representations, innovations in the building technology, greater understanding of spatial organization at large scale can be seen evolving here. We further see that the city of Ur, a city known to Abraham, another prophet who lived long before Muhammad, was founded on the river Euphrates, which had surprising progress in civilization. It was here that the Mesopotamian king Ur Namu had erected the famous Jagurat, the holy mountain. The entire city was surrounded by canal acting as a moat. We also see tile, tile streets and also see narrow streets in the place. In the image, you can see Jagurat, holy mountain at Ur. We see how we were moving from food to the spiritual or the religious centric cities. The discovery of Sumerian city of Ur has shed light on the lives of early Mesopotamians. The city was divided into three parts, the sacred area, the walled city on mound and the outer town. The sacred area consisted of the temple tower or the ziggurat dedicated to the patron god of the city. People resided in the walled city and the outer town areas. Houses were constructed along the streets and each house had a central courtyard with rooms attached around it. The houses were fairly good with single story with a central courtyard. The rich had double story houses. The city of Ur had its trade links with Arabia to the Indus Valley. It was an important warehousing center. Meanwhile, the river Euphrates which had brought so much glory, prosperity to Ur suddenly changed its course and started running some 14 kilometers east of the city. As a result, the canal became dry, lost its shipping trades and ultimately the city lost its value. So here we see how we learn about organizing our religious places, housing, support, structures and infrastructure to support trade. So we see the uh, canal coming in and how the trade coming in with that and how with sudden unexpected scenario how the entire city um, the value goes down with the sudden change in the river stream. Now looking at the Mesopotamian city Babylonia around 1780 BCE as king of the small town of Babylon, Hammurapi united southern Mesopotamia into a single empire. Hammurapi's death caused his empire to fall apart. Despite this, the city of Babylon was to remain the capital of southern kingdom. 60 years of Babylonian supremacy was threatened during the reign of King Nebonidas when Mesopotamia was faced with the expansion of yet another eastern power, the Persians. In 1539 BCE, the armies of the Persian king 
reviewing the pattern of urban planning in this in Babylon, we see massive size of settlement compared to previous settlements. It shows the developed ability to govern large population and to intermix lot of components layers in the uh, planned area. We also see the location of city near river in order to control waterways. We see the new urban form citadel with close linked temple palace unit separate from rest of the town by heights or walls. We see geometry coming in the layout, Mesopotamian tradition of seeing universe as square reflected in the ground plans. So, we also see the, how the geometry came up here. Further we see that they had complex central administration with all security system like gates. We see explicit integration of artwork in the planning and built environment. They also had devoted spaces for gardens, grazing, land and so on. In the image you can see beautiful hanging gardens shows the knowledge of landscaping, building and planning. We see how politics, safety, beauty, water, religion, trade, all aspects were incorporated in the planning and the understanding was evolving by this time. Now let us see the Egyptian civilization which stretched from 3000 to 150 BC. Ancient Egypt was a civilization of ancient North Africa concentrated along the lower reaches of the Nile River situated in the place that is now the country Egypt. Ancient Egyptian civilization followed prehistoric Egypt and merged around 3100 BC with the political unification of Upper and Lower Egypt under Menes. Egypt has sometimes been regarded as a civilization without cities. This view stems largely from the comparison with the contemporary Sumerian civilization where most people lived in large dense urban settlements that are the prototypical cities of the ancient world. We see different types of cities in ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptians divided the cities into two types. The first type and uh, they called it Nut and second type they called it Dem Demai. Nut refers to the city which grew and formed naturally under the influence of nature and climatic conditions. Demai refers to cities that were built and settled according to the predefined planning and examples of these cities were evident in the city of Lahon, Tal El, Daba and Deir El Madina. The Daba Hill area is one of the main cities in the early Middle Kingdom around 2000 BC. Lahan returned to reign of Sanusat II of the 12th dynasty. The town lies on the banks of the Nile Canal on the road to Fayom Oasis. The city is the home of the workers who built the pyramids of Sanusret with some priest who kept the royal right. Flinders Petre, who discovered the city of Lahon, said the streets were designed in an organized manner as well as sewage system to transport dirty residuals outside home. Due to the interest of ancient Egyptians in the category of workers and peasants of the time, who in turn contributed greatly to the construction of ancient Egyptian civilization, the villages of workers was built in the monasteries of the city which was located on the west bank of the Nile and the city of Taiba was first constructed under Thutmose I of the 19th dynasty whose purpose was to shelter the workers who had built tombs in the valley of the king. So you also see how the construction for the working class was also initiated in this period. Further we see that it was found that the design of Deir el Medina contains the main street and is surrounded by wall made of mud bricks. It is decorated on both sides by the rows of houses which are connected with almost a single roof. 
After many expansions of the city, the number of houses reached 120 and it had 600 inhabitants. So we can see how the row housing also coming into picture here. Looking at the pattern of urban planning in the Egyptian civilization, towns comprised of blocks of residential structure arranged in an orthogonal pattern and approached by right angle grids of streets and alleys. We see it also facilitated the army uh, structure and ease of movement from one area to the other. Town walls were aligned with the adjacent ritual complexes. Towns contained their own administrative and religious buildings. Residential houses were oriented towards the interior of their lots and included large reception, living rooms, designated bathrooms, sleeping quarters, storage areas, food preparation and sometimes residential craft areas. The outer walls also often contain gardens and pools. So you can see now how the residential areas were getting complex with the living spaces, the sanitation facilities, the elements for storage and then also uh, the kind of craft in other areas was also coming in and also all the spaces were being integrated. So we see that we evolved in understanding of organized form, also sanitation system in this period which we are trying to deal with even today. Now we look at the Indus Valley civilization, the earlier date was 2600 to 1900 BC. However, the recent study done by IIT Kharagpur and ASI scientists, it is said to be 8000 year old civilization or between the uh, uh, bit falling between 7000 BC to 5000 BC. So according to that, this is one, one of the uh, oldest or the first found element of any civilization and planning intervention. Indus Valley civilization also referred to as Harappa civilization and Saraswati Sindhu civilization between Indus river and Ghagar Hakra river which is in northwestern part of India. We can see town planning concept evolving in this period. We see that it had uh, this civilization had sophisticated and advanced urban culture. It showed evidences of streets in perfect grid pattern in both Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. We also see that it had world's first sanitation system. We also see that it had different uh, sources of water like we can also see individual wells and separate covered drains along the streets for waste water. Houses opened in the inner courtyards and smaller lanes. We can see there were dockyards, granaries, warehouses, brick platform and protective walls. We also notice massive citadels protected the city from the floods and attackers. So we also see the element of uh, uh, protection and resilience for them. City dwellers, traders and artists were also found. All the houses had access to water and drainage facilities, so there was a lot of inclusion which took place and these facilities reached to all the dwellers. Cities grew out of earlier villages that existed in the same locality for 100 years. We see that they grew in size and density and sur were surrounded by numerous towns and villages. Cities interlinked by trade and economic activities, religious beliefs, social relations and so on. We also see that vast agricultural lands, rivers and forests by pastoral communities, fisher folk and hunters surrounded each city. We also find that there were classification of towns within this era. We see that the small villages, hamlets were like which ranged from 0 to 10 hectares. We see large towns which were like 10 to 50 hectares and cities which were like 50 hectares. We also see some of the uh, important cities in this particular time. We see Mohanjadaro Harappa, Ganveriwala, Rakhi Ghari, Dhola Veera, Rahman Dehri. So you can see the sizes, how the sizes vary from 
uh, you can see from 22 hectares to you can find 200 hectares size variation Mohenjo-daro being the biggest of 200 hectares and population variations also you can see uh, though we do not have it for all of them but we you can see that Mohenjo-daro had more than 41,000 population and uh, Rahman Dehri had nearly 12,000 population. Mohanjadaro, meaning Mound of the Dead Man, is an archaeological site in the province of Sindh, Pakistan, built around 2500 BCE. It was one of the largest settlement of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and one of the world's earliest major cities. If you look at the details of the city, there was no fortification, the major streets were uh, in the north-south direction, we see that the in intersections were at right angles, streets uh, were within the built up areas and they were narrow. There were distinct zoning for different groups. We see religious, institutional and cultural areas around monasteries and great bath in western part. We also see that the north was given dedicated for agricultural industry and the south had the administration, trade and commerce. We also see find details on the construction techniques. We see that buildings were constructed with masonry uh, which were sun dried bricks. We also see uh, the um, construction ranging from two rooms to masons with many rooms. We also see underground sewerage and drainage from houses. We see helical pumps for pumping water in great bath. We note uh, that principal buildings such as monastery and bath indicated religious culture. We also look at the detail of great bath. We see that it had a dimension 12 by 7 by 3 meters and then it was one of the earliest public water tank in the ancient world. It had the ledge extends for the entire width of the pool. We also see the what it had watertight floor, thick layer of bitumen was present. We also uh, see that floor slopes in the southwest corner with a small outlet connecting to a brick drain. So, we also see how the drainage was managed and then rooms were located in the east. So, how all the facilities were aligned and associated with the structure. We also find granary and if you look at how detailed it was like we see that 50 by 40 meter uh, granary was uh, given and 4.5 meter tall it was with the mud brick foundation. Two rows of six rooms along a central passageways, seven meter wide and paved with baked bricks. Each room 15 uh, around 15 by 6 had three slipper walls with air space between a wooden stupa structure supported in some places by large columns would have been built on the top of the brick foundation with stairs leading up with, from the central passage area. Small triangular openings, air ducts for fresh air beneath hollow floors. We see large size of granary probably indicates a high developed agricultural civilization. Harappa is an archaeological site in Punjab, Pakistan about 24 kilometers wide in Sahiwal. The site takes its name from a modern village located near the former course of the river Ravi which now runs 8 kilometers to the north. Further we see that uh, Harappa had 23,000 population and was spread across 150 hectares of area. It was earliest city and it may have been formed during the court Digi phase that was around 2800 to 2500 BC. Uh, it is said to be the earliest city covering an area of 25 hectares. It became a center for trade network extending from Baluchistan and Afghanistan to the west of sea coast and south. We see that the town was built over raised mud brick platform. Further we see Lothal was one of the southmost cities of the ancient Indus Valley civilization located in the Bhal region of modern state of Gujarat 
and it was construction of the city began around 2200 BCE. So we can see the uh, drain at Lothal here and then we can also see the um, how different elements, the water and all these structures integrated. Looking at the town planning character, we see that there was citadel mound and lower town surrounded by massive brick wall. We see citadel had square towers and uh, bastions. Large open areas inside the gateway may have been used as a market or a checkpoint for taxing goods coming into the city. Outside the city walls, a cluster of houses may represent temporary rest stops for travelers and caravans. No division of society is reflected in the layout of the city since large public buildings, market areas, large and small houses as well as craft workshops have been found in the same neighborhood. Uh, we also see barracks uh, which uh, were like group of single room tenants must be for the poorer classes. Further looking into the details of the housing, how housing was provided, we see that there were uh, rooms on three sides opening into the central courtyard. Nearly all large houses had private wells. We see the hearth, brick or stone lined fireplace or often used for cooking and for heating uh, which was common in the rooms. We also find bathroom in every house with chutes leading to drainage channels. First, we see that first floor bathroom was also built. We see that the brick stairways provided access to the upper floor. Houses built with perimeter wall and adjacent houses were separated by narrow space of land, granary with areas of threshing grains, burnt brick mainly used for drains, wells and bathrooms, sun-dried bricks used mainly for filling, timber used for flat roof and frames or lacing for brickwork. We also see that uh, there were large public structure and then they were also known for as architecture. So we see large buildings such as administrative or ritual structure. We see access routes uh, which provided thoroughfare from one area to the another. We also see markets and public meeting held in large open courtyards. We also find uh, details about houses and public buildings grouped with shared walls and formed larger blocks and as accessed by wide streets. Most housing had private baths and toilets as well as private wells. We also find very uh, intricate details of the uh, drainage system. Uh, we see there were wells and reservoirs for drinking and bathing. We also see that there were uh, wa wells were lined with specially made wedge shaped bricks to form a structurally sound cylinder. We also see ropes were used to lift the water out probably with leather or wooden bucket. We also see some neighborhood had communal wells, so there was also sharing of the resources happening. We further see that the bathing platforms with watertight floors and drains uh, were uh, provided. We also see drains and water chutes in the upper stories were often built inside the walls with an exit opening just above the street drains. We also see tapered terracotta uh, drain pipes uh, were used to direct water out to the street. So summarizing like what we really collected today, gathered today, so uh, we are looking at the um, history, we are looking at uh, the employment of our cities to contextualize where we are today. So in this journey, we walked through ancient civilization and we saw Mesopotamian civilization, we saw the Indus Valley civilization. So we saw the different component and how we did we evolved in time uh, during these uh, different civilization, what aspects of planning, uh, which layers did we explore and how did our understanding progressed in these different civilization. The following references were used. Our coverage was limited with the scope to make you aware of the topic. There are enormous readings and movies available to explore. Few are suggested here. This is not an extensive list. You may feel free to suggest more from your experience. Please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about your concerns you have. Do share your opinion, experiences, 
and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring cities and urban planning. So uh, that's all for today's lecture. We will continue about the uh, employment in our next session. Thank you.